Okie dokie, cleaning watch parts is a laborious task. So we're gonna go about cleaning all these watch parts here. And this is uh, this is that vintage ultra thin Waltham watch I had. I'm also wearing a mask here, which is steaming up my glasses and that's no good. So, so first thing, first things first, I've got a toothpick here. That's just to stabilize the, the movement while I'm doing the cleaning. And I put an eyepiece on as well. So I can look down close on what I'm doing. And i got to figure out a better way of wearing this stupid mask. Because this is killing me. So I think that the mask, the nose part. The nose part of the mask is underneath the glasses. Which means... There we go. When the air goes up, it goes under the glasses and fogs the mask. It's all that <coughs> same kind of stuff that's happening with COVID masks. Where people are having no fun at all. So, so this is the base movement. I didn't take out this these two wheels here because they're kind of worked into the movement. They're part of it. And this movement has a very weird uh, automatic... Uh, it's got a very weird automatic winding mechanism in it so so this this will get rid of most of the uh, dirt that's in the movement I don't think this movement <coughs> had a lot of dirt in it there's a throat cleaning for you yeah but it's got to be done anyway so while I was um oh look at that that thing did fall out there it is there so it just comes right off I guess it just comes right off and right under. So I gotta get some watch paper here. I'm lacking watch paper. Watch paper, where are you? I lucky I had some I have some available right here. And I gotta lick my finger to pick it up. So I'm gonna put the movement down first really quickly. And then grab this other piece here. See what the heck this is all about. A boot! It's a boot. What is it all a boot, Alfie? What's it all a boot? Alfie. No, I think that's like that. I'm going to figure out how to pick this up. It's tricky. Sometimes when you're picking a part up, you just put your tweezers in the middle and then release and it opens up. And then sometimes. That doesn't work at all. Anyway, I had a uh, I had issues with my computer today. I was actually playing a video game, but I noticed when I'm processing my very high-end videos, I'll lay that down right here, let it dry off. When I'm processing my very high-end videos, I notice that the graphics processor doesn't seem to be doing all the work. It seems like the work is being done by the CPU. So I'm like, what the heck is this all about? So I was um, wondering how I could make my graphics processor do more work and my CPU do less. And I figured it out. <clears throat> and what you do is you go into power settings. And there is this, there is an option within power settings that actually um, reduces the amount of work the CPU has to do. And you can take it from 100% down to... Um, down to 80, 85, which is a 80 or 85. I think I set mine at 80. And what that does is that forces the GPU to do more work. Pretty amazing. This friggin' fogged up shit is really pissing me off. I apologize for the swearing, but I'm not, I think I'd rather breathe the alcohol and get all fogged up. Because I can't work in these, in this, under these circumstances. There we go. One part at a time I shall clean this. One part at a time. Used to be a, uh, I think it was one day at a time was a TV series, right? Back in the day, <clears throat> I think it was keeping your head above water, doing the best that you can. Uh, it was a, no, 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 break up, good times. No, that was good times. I don't think that was one day at a time. So, never mind. I can't sing and I'm not going to continue. 
trying to pick this part up and it's impossible. There we go. Got it. Throw the cannon pinion in there. Throw these gears in there. Just throw everything in for a bath. I try to keep the screws together. So when I put the watch together, um, I don't have an issue with uh, trying to figure out what screw goes where. Because you can do that, but... I notice guys that have cleaning machines tend to put all their watches in baskets and and then watch it, wash everything and then and then reassemble it. But I don't know. I've uh, always found it difficult because some of these screws are some of these screws are bigger than the others. Some of these screws are kind of the same. And when you get a screw that is the wrong size and you have a whole multitude of screws, you're like, okay. Especially if you don't have the manual. Because in a lot of instances, people have the assembly manuals for these watches. And they're able to easily do it because they have an assembly manual. But without the assembly manual, you're screwed. You're screwed. Hey, McCavin, you've been playing with me pipes. I think that's Bugs Bunny referencing. A Bugs a Bunny. I grew up on the Bugs a Bunny. And, uh, and now it's too violent for TV. Amazing. 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 So just kind of get all the crap off of this. Actually, I thought this watch was pretty clean. I'm looking down here and it's starting to get spotty, oh boy. It's getting spotty, old boy. So I'm watching on Netflix with my wife the show called Shameless. And other than multitudes of boob scenes, it's very good. It's very well acted and and I'm impressed by it. And the, the kids, the adults and kids that are starring in it are doing an exceptional job. It's called Shameless and there's nine seasons of it. So it must have been an HBO special. It's on Netflix right now, so... I know that we're all tucked into our COVID blankets right now, so it's, you know, we're not going anywhere. Um, I love, I live up in Ontario, Canada, if you want to want to look for me. <laughs> and, um, you know, our igloos are nice and steady right now. Uh, they're not melting yet. And, um, and in general, the, the uh, COVID-19 is up here as well, but not as worse, as not as bad as it is in the U.S. The Canadians are kind of, they kind of pay attention to their to their orders, and and they uh, basically the government has said wear masks, and we're on a lockdown right now, so we're wearing masks and we're on a lockdown. It's the Canadian way, eh? Why did Jesus, Jesus, eh? So we does the best we can. So we uh, because of that. Our cases are getting very low right now, and the lockdown is over next Wednesday. Um, and my GPU graphics and CPU setting on my computer is are perfect, so I think it's time to play some. The golf game. The golf game 2019, which is a very good golf game, by the way, if you want to impress your friends and play golf online. That golf game is really cool. The graphics are amazing. The the uh, you get used to the uh, you get used to the shot. Uh, I bought a new mouse. I bought a, a gaming mouse. I had a crappy old Dell mouse that was so worn out that the little rubber knobbies in the bottom of the mouse were actually gone, and the mouse was the plastic part of the mouse was scraping against my desk. So, so I'm just doing these wheels here right now. It's uh, I don't have much to say about cleaning the watch when I'm cleaning it like that, but. I could make a, a video as I clean it and another video as I assemble it. So I'm putting all the parts over on the side here um, on this watch paper. Um, it's over there <laughs> like that. But I'm just laying the parts down. I had the parts on the desk all week and uh, waiting for time to do this. And uh, now I have time to do it. So I have the weekend off. And you know that everybody's waiting for the weekend. Everybody's working. Oh, they're working. Everybody's working for the weekend. Everybody's working for the weekend. Dun 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 dun. dun. Everybody's got a new romance. Hey 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 hey. Everybody's 
Blah 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 blah. Everybody's got a you in my heart. Actually, it's not a bad guitar song. <clears throat> I tell you, if I if I could sing, I'd be dead right now because I'd be in a band and I would have partied my butt off for the last 20 years, and I would be in my last uh, breath somewhere in a hospital. But because I can't sing, I can carry a tune, no problem. And I can sing a song, no problem, and I can do backup singing, but I'm not a vocalist. And that has saved my life. Not being able to sing has saved my life. I'm just saying, okay? So this is a small watch, by the way, and this this uh, Waltham, I, I, I don't know sure where I picked it up, but it's a beautiful little watch. It's a Waltham Ultra Thin. And what I was impressed with with this watch was that other than the fact that it's ultra thin, is that when you take it out of the case, I made a, I think I made a video about decasing it, but you, when you take that thing out of the case, um, it's, so I'm gonna clean this whole thing as a single unit. Um, it's, it's amazing, this watch. You take it out of the case from the front, so you have to use the, uh, the grabbers. I, I made a video showing that, right? But you use the grabbers, which are the, uh, it looks like one of those alien mouths that open up and it's 360 degrees of teeth. And you grab the watch crystal and you squeeze down on that watch crystal with that. And then you, and then, and then, I think i got to re revise my nose setting here for these glasses. And then, after you've done that, the screw goes with this part, and then you're just organizing my screws here. And after you've done that, you uh, you clamp down on it, and then you apply pressure, and then you slowly lift it up. And as you lift it up, it gets it lifts up into the um, it lifts out of the watch. And then on the inside, you move a couple of screws on the inside that are holding that watch in place. Um, and then, um, look how lazy I am cleaning this with the, the, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, you loosen the screws and then it just pops out the top. So you flip it over as I showed in that video. And that video I made with absolutely no audio and I got some comments and my, my buddy BJ there said, Hey, I want to hear you talking. I, uh, I missed those Canadian jokes, eh? And uh, I said, okay, next time video I make, I'll be chatting away like a like a five-year-old at a zoo, right? Something like that. Speaking of that, I just learned yesterday that wombat poop is cubed, like like a like a cube of a cube of sugar for your coffee. And the reason for that is that I miss a screw here. Oh, there it is. So yeah, wombat poop is cubed, and it's cubed in order for the wombat to evolve that way. Really, I'm going to clean this later, this spout fork, you should, I believe you shouldn't have it doped in that alcohol, or not the alcohol, but in the lighter fluid for too long. Although, I've never had any problems with lighter fluid in the, uh, in the shellac holding the jewels in. So, but anyway, wombat poop is cubed, and then they poop this cube, well, this cubed poop out to mark their territory, right? Which is what I do all the time. It's a Canadian thing, I think. And then, um, and their intestinal tract creates, it's so slow moving down their intestinal tract that it has time to cube this stuff, right? Although a friend of mine said that the wombat poop, right when it gets to the sphinxter, I love that word, the sphinxter, it, uh, it takes that poop at the sphinxter and creates the cube and then the tail swings by and cuts it off. So if you believe that, I have some swamp land in Alabama for sale. So the old wombat poop. Little known fact. And did you know that it's a little known fact that that the um, the pumpkin is the only animal with triangular eyes. Now, BJ, you're making me talk like this, okay? So I wouldn't have been doing any of this if you didn't 
if you didn't ask for me to say a few things. So I would have shut up. And now I'm just chatting away like a teenager. So anyway, so that was my great amounts of knowledge I picked up recently was the wombat boot knowledge. And I'm sure that will get me somewhere in life, right? I watch this doesn't fly anywhere. I don't have a part underneath this part. I'm just wondering. Because this looks like it's a, got a hill here. Which means there's a part under here. No, actually it's the uh, the material I have here. Tends to, when, the, when this fluid hits it, it, it jumps up. The, the material I'm using here is actually used for... Uh, let me put that screw back here. This is, it's used for... Uh, baking. So it's it's a baking thing. So I bought some baking stuff because someone said this is really good for watchmaking. But the only problem is this baking stuff uh, rides up really high, which is no good at all. Um, and I got screws flying all over the place. So like these screws here, which is part of this. So I'll just leave that like that. So the other parts I'll, clean, I'll put on here. And uh, I'm not sure if I process the whole video at once, the assembly after the cleaning, or just do the cleaning separately. Or what, right? I gotta move my cleaning bowl over. You guys can't see anything. It's basically, if I clean on this end, right, you'll see the part. If I clean on the other end, you see nothing, so. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the audio, right? And that is such a wonderful thing. I'll get some thumbs down on this video for sure. Anyway, there is a guy out there that, that restores antique watches. And I was chatting with him because he made a pretty good video. And he told me that he watches all my videos. He said, I watched a ton of your videos. I'm like, I do have a ton of videos. So he must have watched the whole ton. Um, Tundran Jesus. Tundran. I don't, no, I don't clean the uh, screws for these particular watches because I don't believe that they collect any dirt. But you know, when you put them back in, they don't make much difference, so I don't bother cleaning them. But maybe if you're a purist, you clean the screws. Um, but I don't think I'm a purist. I think I do good work, but I don't clean the screws. So that, so there, so there. So, a needle pulling thread. So I'm at the winding mechanism. I'm almost finished. I almost finished this. Still having fun with the goggles. I got my mask hanging from my head right now, so. But I can't really smell any alcohol or any lighter fluid. I'll know 20 years from now when I got lighter fluid cancer. Because I don't recommend. I recommend actually keeping your mask on, but I gotta figure out a way of having the mask on at the same time um, being able to see shit. Because I can't see stuff with this mask on. Plus I'm having a hell of a time picking up this part. There we go. Uh, I can't see the uh, the parts when, I, when my glasses steam up. So if someone's got a better idea for masks, I'll take it. So, I'm all for it. Please send me better ideas for masks. So, if, if the audio is screwed up on this as well, and it's all razzy and stuff like that, well, it's going to be too bad because I've recorded a whole lot of audio, and I'll be pissed off if it doesn't work. So, I'm going to finish here, right? I'm going to do the case as well, but I'll stop here for now. Alrighty then, now it's time to reassemble this movement. Again, this is the... Um, Waltham Ultra Thin Movement. I put it back in my very wonderful number fifth number fifty eight movement holder by Myers M E Y E R S. So, and I've cleaned this movement out, and it's pretty difficult to peg the jewels on this, but they look pretty clean now. So, not worried too much about it. Um, and I got to reassemble it, and. <clears throat> And I know I should reassemble it. I'm not sure which direction I should reassemble it in first, but I know I must reassemble it. I know that part, right? So, which parts do you reassemble first? That's the question. So, 
I think I've got a mystery screw or two here as well that I got to figure out. So, so I know that this plate here, uh, where is that crazy plate I had earlier? There it is there. So I know this fits on. I got all these parts on the watch paper, so they're probably moving all over the place. I may want to take them off the paper and put them on a a solid footing. This part here is like difficult to pick up. I tried picking it up earlier and I was like, what the heck is going on here? So that goes in there, but it goes, I believe it's it tucks underneath this other gear, which could be difficult, but again, the glasses are kind of screwed up here. It goes underneath like this and then tucks in there. I know this isn't going to work for me. I gotta get new lighting, I think. So we're just trying to f let this thing find its hole. There we go. And then you can see moving that moves that wheel on top. Like so. So, so there you go. And I think I will put a dab of oil on that too. You don't want to over oil anything on a watch. So you want to make sure that uh, you're putting the right type of oil in the right place. And I've gone through a couple of a couple of videos before where I've talked about oiling, but as you oil, you pull the oiler out slowly. That's all you need there. You pull the oil out slowly and you get less oil on it. You pull it out fast and you get a big blob of oil. So it just depends on what you're oiling to how you want to do that. So, so that's what I'm talking about. Um, I know this, there's a screw that goes over here and that's a screw that's needed for the main plate. So I'm going to uh, figure out when to put that one in. Um, what I did here, was, which is kind of neat, is I have a video that I made where I'm showing the whole thing being done in reverse. So, for example, this screw here, um, let me see what's the top of this look like. This screw here goes in this hole here. I think it does anyway. There we go. And that's the screw. I have to check the other side again, but make sure if it goes this way. But that's the screw that you loosen, right? And when you loosen it, you're able to pull the stem out. So, and this is European watches, which kind of proves that this thing is Swiss made. So, although, you know, because they, they didn't have this configuration for American watches usually pressed a button or something but it didn't this didn't work that way so that's for the uh, the other side I don't know where the name of that screw is but but that's what that was for so these two and these two wheels the barrel goes over this one here so the mainspring barrel so when I put reassemble that I gotta make sure that I uh, do it properly um, I may want to put the uh, I think I'll put the uh, all the setting mechanisms in first on this watch. Just hang on while I figure out what I want to do first. <clears throat> Alright, this should be fun. Again, doing this without the manual is a little bit tough because you uh, you kind of go in a little bit blind and you, you just got to rely on logic and try to get the thing together properly. So it's Sometimes not that easy. You get all the wheels in there the correct way, um, and then hope you get it right. So I know that uh, certain things go a certain way in this watch, but which way do they go? So the screw anchor thing here has a knobby going outward, so I gotta take this thing here and somehow turn it around the other way. This component right here, and this goes this way. No, it doesn't go that way. It goes, see, it pushes towards the thing. 
with that on this side. Is that right? No. I think there's a hole on that side. I believe there is. So this here, again, showing all my faults and mishaps. So I just put this thing together quietly and no one is knowing the difference. There, so that's there. And let me see. I may have to get closer with my, uh, I may have to get a better lens on here so I can get a bit tighter. Because right now I don't think I'm tight enough. Because it's, uh, I need to get a toothpick to hold some of this stuff down as well. It's almost like working on a lady's watch. It's almost like working on a lady's watch. Which I absolutely despise. Absolutely despise. But I do it anyway. I only do it for extremely close friends. I think I need a smaller screwdriver here. This is almost my smallest screwdriver. Which is not good, but... There. I can't talk while I'm doing this or I'll screw it up. Now I'm not sure if there's something I have to put on before this plate here. So I may end up having to take this off again. I'm not absolutely sure. I also took some photos of the movement. Um, specifically so I wouldn't forget anything. But, 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 who knows? Who knows? I know this thing goes in next somewhere, but I've got to figure out where this goes. So it's towards me. I have a decent photo here, but I need to flip the whole movement around in order to take advantage of the photo. Let's just turn this around like this. like that and then I'm orienting my photo the same way so there we go tighten that up a bit doesn't need to be super tight but tighten that up a bit and then I gotta lay this part in I need to just stick that on my finger and drop it on the floor I don't know I think I just lost it somehow Or is it sit? Oh, it's just sitting right here on top. So this goes in here somehow. I just don't know how. Again, if you've got the manual, it's a lot easier. Right now, it ain't a lot easier. I got to look at the curve of the parts. And this part here, this curvy part here, this goes. You can see there's a hump with a thing on it, so that's the hump there. And that hump goes up, and then it goes down and over. And it, it actually rides on one of these things here. So, and if I look at this, it's kind of even with this little bump here, so it's this thing here. So if I do process of elimination here, it goes, it should go right there. There we go. Look at that, and that's for pulling the stem back and forth or the crown or castle or the ratchet it's actually the ratchet I think so that's that there and so that's in and then on top of that on top of that goes this little jobby do hickey and this guy um, has it actually goes like that and he screws into this screw here, so I'm going to have to pick the movement up. 
to screw that in. So I'm going to turn the camera off because i got to pick the movement up, hold that in place, and then put that screw in. That is, the, I think, the only way of doing it. So I also have a spring i got to put in that's right here. So I've got to remember where that spring goes in. I can't quite remember that yet. So I might have to put the spring in before I put the other thing in. So I'm just going to put the spring off to the side for now and see if I can figure that one out. Oot! Figure it oot! To resemble it. Alright, so I had a little look at all this stuff and the, um, the spring. The spring I had tucks in right there. I'm always worried about these springs flying out. So it's right there and this is there and I just laid this down here. And I believe if I take this part here, which is the pull, and I gotta have a look at which way this part goes, just for a second. And it goes pull down, hole up. So pull down, hole up. So that's the pull there. So it would go the other way. Lay that down for a second, and it's pull down, hole up. So that goes like this. That goes like this. Like that. And that holds that spring down. And I'm hoping that doesn't block the little wheel. I gotta, I gotta put a little wheel under here again in a second. It's, uh, it was missing that wheel. So, but I just grabbed this, and where is the screw for it? Who knows? I gotta go screw hunting again. I think. Oh, there it is. I think this is it here. I remember the screw being this massive screw and going, what the hell is this big giant screw doing here? The big giant screw. Like that, and I gotta get a bigger screwdriver. Because this is a monster screw. And try not to make all this stuff go boing. just hit the camera here so I'm not tightening any of this up stuff up severely because that's in there now and then this here has to be screwed in from the bottom so I actually have to go underneath and do that but before I do that there's the world's smallest uh, where's my screwdriver here there's the world's smallest screw I need to put in here The other thing I don't want to do is the screwdrivers will move parts around so when you're doing this work make sure that you're aware of where the screwdriver is because it will move parts around. I'm just going to pick this up with my Rodico here. Where is that screw? It's right there. Also keep these screws around away from your hands. I probably could have just undone one of these and then rotated it. I'm not sure. Maybe not. It's too late in the day, man. Too late in the day. Just pick this up. I think I can't stand doing these more than anything because these watches when I put the um, winding mechanisms in they're such a pain in the butt so I have to look and see if there's a beveled part in this at all 
I don't believe there is, but that looks like the side that would be beveled if it was. So this goes right here. And then uh, you got to basically hold your breath when you're doing some of this stuff. So I've seen other watchmakers do videos and they never talk. They just do their video and then they overdub it because it is difficult to do the uh, have a conversation while you're trying to do this because you're trying to focus. So especially with with pocket watches, it's not as bad because the parts aren't as small but with watches the parts are so darn small that you need to hold your breath sometimes when you're trying to turn these screws kind of like shooting a rifle same thing so I can tighten this down now I'll tighten this down and I'll tighten this down so I think I can loosen that later if I need to and then this here just has to attach to that screw that's on the other side so and it's underneath this part I think that's the screw right there it's so darn hard to see right so I'm gonna have to take the movement out to turn to tighten that so I'll be I'll be back I'll be back all right, there it's all together now. So, just like the song, all together now, all together now. So what I did here was I had I put this in. I had an intermediate wheel to put in down here, so I did that, and I put the cap on the bridge on top here in place, and then I had a spring in here on the side to put down, and then this device here, this arm here the screw underneath lifts and raises and lowers this arm to get the stem in and out and I had to tuck in there so I had to hold it with my finger while I screwed that back in there because that was very difficult to put back in I tighten this I tighten that this is tightened now but later on I'm gonna have to loosen it up to put the spring back in but all this is back together now so which is nice um, because I, I actually think that's the hardest part of reassembling a watch is the is putting together the the winding mechanisms right which is um, very difficult I think so I usually put a little spot of oil in here to to make things nice and smooth and I usually put a spot of oil right here just so I can like that and then I'll put oil in on the other side for this here. I don't need to oil that right now. So, so that's that there. Um, so this is pretty much all together nicely. So all together now. All together now. So that is good. That is excellent. That's the hard part, I think. Um, and I'm going to put my gloves back on. Because I actually want this watch to not have any fingerprints on it. So I need to... I'll assemble a little bit more and then I'm going to eat dinner and relax. That's what I'm going to do, ladies and germs. Eat dinner and relax. And, uh, and I do have a video that's showing me what's next all the time as I assemble this thing. Because I just took the disassembly video and reversed it. Brilliant move, I must say. So I just have to make sure everything is in its place, the screws are in place. Um, and then I got to figure out what I'm assembling next, right? As I flip this thing around, I think that's good. I still have to clean that jewel, but I'm going to do that later. I'm going to get the core of this back together again. So I flip this around the other way, and like that. 
And I think I've got to put this, um, I got to put that wheel back in there. So, so let me just do that. The famous can't grab it properly wheel, I call it. Doesn't matter how gently I grab this wheel, it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to do anything. All right, there we go. It's in there, there. And then I've got this, this center wheel I need to put in next. So just before I put the center wheel in, I'm gonna have a look at the other side of this thing. That is a huge, huge hole. I don't think that's the right wheel. I think this might be the wheel here. Yeah, because this wheel... I think this is the wheel. I'm not quite sure though. Because this might go the other way. I just need, need to do a little research. I think this might go like this. There we go. That goes like that. And what I, I just want to put a little tiny bit of oil on there before I put that in. So just hit that camera. That's what you got to do is hit that camera a lot. So I'm just going to take a little dab will do you here. A little dab will do you. Just put it on the wall there. No problem, and then that will spread around nicely. <clears throat> I'm in golf whispering mode today. So now when I put that wheel in, there we go. It goes in like that, nice and perfectly. Nice and perfectly. Okay, the next thing I've got to put in place is this crazy bridge. This is um, very difficult because it's uh, it's a crazy bridge. It looks like it goes like this, but it looks like something might be in the way here. Actually, this might be the way it goes. Somehow this wheel is able to turn. This is weird. That is one crazy bridge, let me tell you. Now, I don't know if this is a crazy bridge screw or not, but I think this I've got another bridge here that's got two screws. I'm not sure if that's the crazy bridge screw or not. Or these two screws here, I think, maybe. Yeah, so this screw right here. Let me try this out and see what happens. going in this just doesn't look like it's right I'm gonna examine this for a second you know as crazy as that bridge is that's exactly how it goes in and there's a um, screw here and the other screw I believe goes in right here and I know the wheel there's a little tiny hole there with the, the pivot for the wheel goes through that hole. So that's the crazy bridge alignment. Every now and then I got the camera pretty close. I don't have the uh, 
I don't have one of these super duper $2,000 cameras that's 500 feet away. Someday I'll buy one and I'll afford it. And, but for now, this is what I have. So, And <clears throat> in the interest of lub lubridity, that's a word, I'm going to lubricate this hole right here. Right frickin' there. Yeah, there we go. Lubricate that hole. Lubricate the hole. The hole. And that's the way that goes. Now the next thing that goes into this wonderful hole of wonderfulness is the second hand stem and that goes right through the center at least I think it does Time some for some more analysis, I think. There it dropped in. I just had to get up close on it, so it just dropped right into the center there. So it's fine the way it is. That's the old style of putting a second hand in. So they didn't used to do that back in the day. But um, that was the way they did it and uh, seemed to work back then. I don't know why, but it did. So it's kind of crappy but that's the way it worked anyway so that's that stem there so I gotta see if I can deal with a bit more of this stuff here okay now I'm going to put the barrel in and the barrel goes uh, this way I believe That's in there. It's good there. Good enough. Now we're going to put in some of the gears. So we'll first put in the good old escapement. And that should go in here. That is going to go in, I believe, right under here. I think I gotta get a lot closer than I am right now. Because it's not good to be far away. And then next, I put the pallet fork in. I clean the stones, actually, rub them with Rodico after I uh, did the job on them. So, pallet fork would go in right here. Like that. And then the bridge. With a pallet fork, it goes in over that. So hang on a second, I grab this bridge and put that down right over the top. I keep complaining about my lighting, but I'm gonna not swear. I'm gonna say, "Gall darn it!" 
the lighting needs to improve. It's, it's pissing me off because the lighting is poor. It's poor. Gotta make sure the pallet fork is still in there. Yeah, that's still in place. And then this can go over the top of that. I believe it goes in. I just move this around, get my fingers out of the way. It goes in like this. There we go. It's down there now. I need to get my toothpick on top there so it doesn't bounce up. I was watching a guy from Rolex put a watch together and he does the exact same thing except the toothpick he uses is like this just make sure this is nice and loose yeah that's good the toothpick he's using is like plastic and probably especially made for doing this kind of thing right there we go. So that's the escapement is down there, and the pallet fork is now in place, which is a good thing. Okay, now I'm going to put in, you just move this so it's in more visible. There we go, right there. Now I'm going to put in the, I think, the third wheel before the escapement. So let me just grab this and see if I can place it in nicely. Again, I might have to get closer up, but for now I'll just approach the problem like this. I, I gotta find glasses that I can switch up that aren't so difficult. There, that was nice actually, that worked well. As long as that's all in place, and then this wheel here is an odd wheel here that I've got to put in. I think this wheel must go gear up. It's the only way for it to go in and I dropped it. You need to stop dropping things. So you gotta hold it lightly but not so lightly that you're gonna drop it. So I think this goes gear up like this. I'm going to have to check the reference on this one. Oh, well, I was wrong. It goes gear down. So the pinion goes down. It doesn't look like there's enough room in there to put this down with the pinion down. But Like that, maybe? So you're going to have to have a look at that up close. Alright, I think this is all good. So now I've got to drop this plate down. I'm going to line all this stuff up. So this could be tricky, folks. could be very tricky. I'm just going to just eyeball this thing here. Just 
see where all the pivots are. So I got one, two, three, four. Now, actually, before I do that, let me see. Yeah, I got to put a drop of oil down on one of these. So I just put a drop of oil on one of the jewels there. And I'm going to see if I can just place this down. And it goes like this. And my pivots are like that. Like that. And so if I drop it down, it goes down, I think, kind of like this. And now it's Nudgeville, USA. So I think I'll come back after I've done all the nudging. Yeah, I'm going to come back so you don't have to watch me nudge. So I'm just trying to figure out what screw goes where now because there's a couple of screws here and I also don't want this thing to pop up on me. So I'm going to take one of the longer screws and just put that in right here. And I actually don't know whether that's correct or not. It might be in the other one, actually. And I'm not going to tighten this all the way, because I'm worried about the... Uh, the plate and the alignment of the wheels. So I got that down good enough and I just have to make sure that I'm seeing all of the all these pivots through the top before I commit to uh, I think the pivot for the second wheel is not in place. Loosen this up just a bit. So I have to nudge that pivot in place. I may have to get up close to that again. Oh, it might just fall into place right now. Is that do I have a gap there still? Yeah, I do. So I just like to see if there's free movement on that wheel. And then I press down just a bit. It just doesn't seem like there's free movement on that wheel. So once again, I got to look at it from the underside and then come back. All right, I've done all the tapping and schmapping. I think I'm okay. So I need to put these screws in before something moves. So I only have one more screw to put in here, which may not make any sense because I've got three screws here. So I'm, well, I do have a screw on top here, but that's for something else, I'm sure. So let me just try this, this short one here. I'll leave this long one off to the side until I think I need some. Until I'm missing a screw, and then we'll just use that. How's that sound? So I'm going to put this screw down here, 
tighten that up. And just make sure everything's still free. Yeah. I'm going to check on the inside. I just moved the uh, Move the escapement here and just make sure it's free. And it is. And it is. So I can tighten this screw up now. So, without further ado, this plate is on. Now I'm going to go have dinner and relax and do the rest of this later, which equals tomorrow morning. So I think I'm good with all this. Let me reach in there again and then tap those, tap that wheel. Yeah, it's all good. That is all good. All right. That's tough. That's a tough plate to put in. So I'll be back with more adventures. All right, it's the next day actually. And so this is a continuing saga of putting this watch back together. And as you can see, I've gone pretty far in one day. I need to uh, continue with this, this adventure though. Um, I'm actually looking for my tweezers right now, which is crazy. Oh, there they are. So, yeah, so I got it into this uh, very good situation that I have right now. And the next thing I need to do on this is put together this winding assembly. So it's, this is what it looks like here. It's kind of a strange little assembly. Um, but uh, very small, very small gears on this thing. So, but I'm going to put a little dab of oil on those jewels before I put that in. Um, I did not disassemble this. I don't know if it's you're able to, but but I didn't bother doing it because I didn't want the uh, struggle of trying to reassemble it. So so it goes into the watch like that in this manner. But I'm just going to first put a, a little dab of oil on those jewels, just very little, which I'm not sure is a good idea or not because it's so small. There's probably zero friction on it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So there's that system. I know this is probably out of focus, but um, I don't want to. I don't want to fart with the focus I have already on this. So I'm going to. Um, as I said before, when you put oil on a watch like this, you just have to make sure that um, you don't take to make sure you don't put too much oil in by taking your oiler out slowly. And that'll ensure that not a lot of oil gets on there. Um, the thing you don't want to do when you're repairing watches is over oil. Because if you over oil, then the watch is going to collect a lot of dust. And that causes all kinds of other problems. Let me look at the other side of this little thing a jobby do, hickey, jobby hickey do and see if there's any yeah there's some opportunity there as well so I'm gonna just put a little bit of oil on that as well these are pretty fine gears um, there must have been some pretty good engineering by the Waltham company to figure this out usually um, usually engineers I'm an engineer, so I can say this, but usually engineers um, over design. And uh, they say the mes best method of, of uh, reducing complexity is to actually build a system and then start removing things until it doesn't work. Or just build a system and say, how can I make this system still work? By removing complexity and simplifying it, making it still work. Because the simpler it is, the uh, the better it'll work and the more maintainable it is. So this thingy job you do goes in like this. Um, I gotta figure out how that drops in but I think it drops in kinda like this. 
This is as tricky as heck here. What the heck am I doing? And again, I'm going to just move this around here to see if I can. You have to take this out and drop it in again because this is not this is not falling in the way I want it to. I got like a lot of light coming in from my window today. The light is causing me to go blind, Jerry. I'm blind. I'm trying to find the screw hole here for it. There's usually a stud and a screw hole. So I may have this over too much. Looks like it wants to fit right here. Might be too tight to the holder or something. I look at my uh, diagram again. I gotta turn these blinds down. I'm going blind. Yeah, that's better. Holy crap, a lot of sun out there today. A lot of sun. So what do I got here? This thing goes up. Oh, this goes almost over to the... Uh, yeah, I got this in the wrong place here. This goes over, almost over to the, to the barrel. Again, very difficult to do these things without manuals, but you have to. So this goes almost over to the barrel, and, and it's, I believe, in this configuration, one, two, three, and so it's dropping in here. Man, was I ever off. This is so light, whenever you let go of it, it just pops around, so... I, I wonder when the, um, I'm going to have to loosen this movement holder up and then rotate this around. So I just do that, pull it out just a bit, like this, and then rotate this around so I get more visibility to this here in the corner, like that, and then push it together, like this. This is again the world's greatest movement holder. World's greatest movement holder. Snug it just a bit, not too much. And then I want to look at where this thing is dropping in. So that's pretty perfect here. Just looking at the movement of these gears here to see what touches what what touches what so that's in like that and I've got two screws here that I've got to apply um, one of them drops in like this somebody said a while ago that the um, I was watching uh, someone putting a watch together and they were they were they put both screws in and then they tighten them right so i put the screws in and i don't tighten them right away but i put them in one at a time and the reason i do that is the um, if i put two screws in sometimes they jump out of position and then it makes it more difficult if i do one screw at a time i feel like i've got more control so I just want to make sure that there's no, just take up my screwdriver and move these wheels just a bit. And they seem like they're moving no problem. So they're part of the winding mechanism. So there's pretty some pretty cool engineering going on here that whoever designed this, I'd love to know who des the designer of the Waltham Thin was. 
So I'm going to tighten these down. Tighten this one down. And again, um, I just use my screwdriver blade here. If you're a purist, you probably use a toothpick, but I'm very light on it here. And I'm looking to make sure that these wheels are moving properly, and they are. So that's good. Um, I start and stop my videos a bit just to make sure the audio is working properly and I'm not causing any issues. But uh, as I said earlier, I had problems with my computer and it was really neat to fix. So I'm going to just tell you briefly what that fix was. So the fix, the fix for this, get this in the right position here. The fix for this was, <coughs> was actually um, going into my my power setups within the computer and there was there was a uh, a setting under the advanced power setters settings rather um, where you could change your processor the percent of your of your CPU usage so you go in there and there's a CPU usage thing and you change the percent of your CPU usage and it drives the amount of processing going through your CPU and I think it forces the processing to go to your your graphics processor unit, your GPU, and since I, I now have a, uh, a what's it called, a Radeon RX 480, and I replaced my Radeon RX 290 with a 480, and I basically bought it from my buddy who's got like a more, he, he had a, 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 this as an older one, I swapped him with it, and uh, I didn't swapped him, I got it from him anyway, so I set that up, the, the, the new video card, and it's got eight gigs of, of, of memory in it, of RAM, and uh, and a, a very good graphics processor and stuff. And I figured this should double. I I, I like playing um, I like playing the golf game 2019 with him online. It's really good because we golf together um, in real in real life. Um, so we kick our each other's butts on the golf game. So. Um, so, but I was having a problem because my computer was heating way above 65 Celsius, up to 70, and the fans were going like crazy. My CPU fan was was whirling at 6,000 uh, RPMs, which is like way too high. And I was actually pointing another fan at my at my uh, computer to cool everything down, which worked a bit, but it was stupid. So I said, "How can I control this?" So just just basically moving it from 100% processing in the CPU down to 80% solve my problem and I think I might make a video on that because it's brilliant and it worked so well so I think I might make a video on that because it's very useful for other people to understand that but back to the watch back to the watch all right it's big plate time I call it big plate time so the, the way I was able to figure out how to reassemble this watch um, I think is brilliant but what I did what I was able to do um, I'm sure, is there a spring missing there? No. What I was able to do is I recorded the video, this video, this very video, not the very video you're watching. I recorded a video showing um, how to disassemble this watch. And then I thought, why don't I just reverse this video, right? And then and it'll show me how to assemble it. And so playing in the background, just trying to get this lined up properly here. Playing in the background, I have this video showing how to um, how to how to disassemble it. So I've got a, my video playing backwards, right, showing how to assemble it. So I process the video again, but I put it in my in my uh, video software, and I reversed it. I'm telling you. I'm a genius, Jerry. I'm a genius. Except I don't make sure I put this in properly or I'm not so much of a genius, right? I think this is the screw here. Let me make sure I get this thing operating correctly here. And I'm not screwing it up because at the end of the day, if this thing doesn't wind properly, I'm screwed, right? So that's this thing here, and I've got three screws for this. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinque, cinque. 
I got this stupid light coming in from the curtains. It's pissing me off. All right, we're back in business. All right, let me uh, grab these screws here. I think one is longer than the other. I hate when that happens. Hey, geez, I hate when that happens. One of them's flat-headed, and the other one is the other ones are are not flat-headed. So I got three different type of screws. So it's one thing you, you actually can't see in the video because it's uh, it's so, so difficult. But I have to put a screw in here, and then I've got to put a screw in here. So somebody tell me where that extra screw goes. Because this doesn't make any sense at all. And I've got this this little thing about jobby do here which is for the winding mechanism so I got one screw to put in here so if I look at this screw here and say okay that's probably this one here because it doesn't seem to be too deep let me look and see how deep that is no it might go deeper than that so so that might be this screw here but I'm not absolutely sure that might be this screw here so let's just throw that one in and see what happens get the proper screwdriver so make sure when you're putting screws in that you're actually using the proper blade width because if you don't use the proper blade width then the screwdriver will not work properly so I'm going to throw this one in here you got to make sure that ring stays on it looks like it came off. I don't want to lose that. That would be a floating part, as they say, in the watch repair business. And then this one here might be the shallow one. It can't be the long one, because that's really long. So, we'll see if the shallow one fits here. Come on, shallow one. And then I've got like one extra screw. I'm going to hit the camera with this, I know it. I think I was talking to my wife the other day and she said, you know, when you're doing your videos, you, uh, you're you blocking the camera sometimes. So if I go back a bit like this and I come at it at an angle, I'm not hitting the camera. Yeah, that's not, that's too shallow. I'm going to grab the other screw here and get rid of this one. If I can actually grab this without causing a problem. I think in the morning when I get my coffee in me and everything's kind of rattly because I've got a coffee in me, I should probably not be working on watches under the influence of caffeine because I uh, think that let's see if this one goes in deep enough this is like a big screw to be in here the other one fit nicely this one looks like it's an overkill if my theory of screw matching works this was this should be the right screw but I'm not sure how good my theory is here of screwology because that goes pretty deep in there just make sure the plate doesn't lift you know but once I finish putting this whole watch together if it um, in fact Make sure these are tight as well. Um, once I'm finished putting this watch together, if in fact there's a, everything is fine, then everything works, and there's really no issue, right? 
that's in there like that. Now I'm going to check that video to see whether I've, I'm missing anything. So stand by. All right, so now I'm going to put in the upper winding wheel. And this is this wheel here. I'm trying to remember the names of these things. So I've got to turn this watch around though and have a look at it because I, I, I have this fear. Actually, that's the wrong wheel. I have this fear that I've got the wrong, the wrong names. No, actually, I got, I got the, um, I got to look at the other side because I've got to put this other wheel in, and I'm not sure if it's, if I've done a good job or not. I also have to look at the way this one goes because if it goes the other way then I screwed it up. So let me just take this out for a second. It's having a problem problem grabbing it with um, screwdriver. So the old Rodico trick always works. There we go. That's the way it should go, my friends. Just like that. The Rodico is man's best friend. You probably thought it was duct tape, but it's not. It's Rodico. Look at this, just dropping screws down like crazy. So I wish they would mark these as reverse winding, because I know this particular screw winds in the opposite direction. I know that from remembering the disassembly, but not all of them are like that. So it's it's a pain in the butt to, where they uh, don't tell you this. So tightening would be reversing, I think like that. And when I tighten this, it should stay There we go. Look at that. So it works while it's tightened. And I got to look at the other end of this to make sure that I can still get this uh I think it's a crown wheel maybe. It's called. I got to make sure I can still get that in tucked in underneath the winding mechanism. I'm not creating a problem I can't solve. Yeah, I think I can tuck that in. So that's this wheel here. This wheel here has got to get tucked in underneath here. So if I can't tuck that in, then I've got to take that plate off, put it down, and then put it back in again. So I'm just hoping and praying I can tuck that in. And that goes, usually goes like this. And then you have the other wheel that you have to put in beside it. So I'm just a little bit nervous here because I think this, if I drop this in here, will it stay? Right? Will, it, will I be able to get this in here? Uh, the answer is yes. Gonna move this mystery screw here. Mystery screw. And then I have to basically just move that over and see if that stays. This just goes up a bit and over. I need a much smaller screwdriver for this operation, folks. Yeah, this, the, um, these mechanisms are such a pain in the butt to get in close to do the to do the work on these. This is like surgery, I think. Not that a surgeon would say that. But. Yeah, I don't want to have to to move this.
I don't know, maybe if I drop it in the other way it'll work. Well, I'm going to have to play with this for a little while. And I know that when you're watching a video, how boring it can be watching somebody try to fix a problem like this. Because I have to get this underneath that arm, and I can't do it the way I'm doing it. So I'm going to cancel it, or just stop this for a second and fart with it. All right, really quickly, I just decided to put the stem back in so I have some control over this wheel. So and I've got to get this arm on top of this wheel like that. So it's not easy. And I've got to do it somehow without causing any great issues. So we get this movement back in the holder a bit. And I may have to loosen to do that, I may have to loosen this arm here, because I can raise it up a bit, but but it does, it won't raise up enough, so, but if I loosen this screw here, eh, I might be able to raise the whole damn thing up just a bit. So I just loosen that just a bit. And I just worried about this moving here. So it's a it's one whole complex thing put together. So it's The other thing is if I pull the stem out, the crown or that wheel might drop a bit. And then I can slide it underneath and then put the stem back in. See how that winding mechanism works here? But it's not tight up against that unless I've got the... Uh, the stem in properly. I'm pulling back on it and I'm seeing that it might tuck in here. Oh look at that. Look at that. I may have solved the problem. Hopefully you just you didn't see any of that. But. Oh great, so I just broke the head off of the screw, which is not good, which means I got to go find another screw and figure out how to get that head off. This is not good. I just broke the head off the screw, tightening this. Um, so now I've got to go screw hunting and find another screw that will fit in here. Because now this mechanism is not going to work because the head's gone. So I'm going to leave this like that turn it around, reassemble everything, undo that, find another head, or find another screw, put the screw back in, and continue. So, I'm a little bit pissed off that that happened, but this is the world of watchmaking. So, this I over-torqued that screw and broke the head off, thinking that I uh, had enough leverage to do that, which is pissing me off now. Because now I got just gave myself another job. And this was working so well. Let me see if that worked. If this actually worked. Yeah, I'm going to have to fix that. This is not good at all. Damn it. And, it, and that's the mechanism I hate working on. So... Yep, let's just uh, leave that the way it is. I'm hoping this doesn't fall out because it's going to cause me all kinds of other problems. So I'm going to do something that 
basically, like I told you, I like to show all my faults, and that was one of them. I shouldn't have done that. But I want to re I want to assemble this to a point where I'm not worried too much about it. So I'm going to put some Rodico in the top here, just to hold all this stuff in place, and then flip it around. Watchmaker's duct tape, and make sure there's enough stuff here. Just can't. I don't know whether I should fix that screw problem first. Uh, maybe I should before I reassemble. Yeah, I'll fix the screw problem first. That means I got like a half an hour of screw hunting probably. Which is not a good thing. So I'm just going to remove the Rodico. Hopefully it's not grabbing everything, everything in the world on the way out. And then take the stem out, right, which means I got to loosen See this adventure? How good this is? I thought this was going to be boring today, but no, it's not boring. It's the opposite. So there's another lesson for you. Don't over tighten the screws because you can break the top the head off the screw. I haven't done that in freaking years. I never thought I could I would ever do that. Just solving a very simple problem. Um, putting the mechanism back together and I just got a little bit overzealous or something and this thing just broke right off. I was like, okay, let's tighten this nicely. I tightened it too nicely. So now we gotta take this up out here very carefully. That's this here. And then I've got the screw in here, which I have to see if I can get the screw out. I'm hoping it's not too tight. Yeah, look at that. It's moving. So I should be able to knead it out nicely. And then I got to find another screw that's the same size. Now, in watchmaking, you have to have three, three million screws. So I always have a huge collection of screws that I use. So here I'm just sort of using my tweezers. I think I'll use my screwdriver here to see if I can move this around. Just move it on both sides. I'm not sure whether I can do... No, nothing from the top. The other thing I can do is take a piece of Rodico and nub it and then turn it into a screwdriver. like this. Take a piece of Rodico like that, put it on the top, and then use this to turn the uh, screw. Look at that. So that screw is now out. Oot! And the other thing is do not get depressed because this can be very depressing sometimes. So now I've got the screw and this, this very small screw like that. And I got the screw head, and I've got to match that up, and I can put another screw in there as long as the screw head's not too, not too uh, flat. So we'll see what works, because I know that when I put the, when I put the, um, and I don't, I don't want to lose the spring either. But when I put the, the uh, face back on. I can't have that screw up so high that it's going to push up on the face. Um, it has to be lower than the lowest part of the wheels and everything. So you look at all that sideways. And yeah, that screw has to be pretty flat. That's why they have a flat head screw. And the flat head screw doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of strength because there's not a lot of screw attached to it. So let me go find a screw. Alright, I dipped into my world's hugest number of screws and I actually have is you just a word? I don't think so. I actually have three containers like this and another container. There's another one here and another container that's even bigger with screws and there's another one here and whenever I go on the internet and look for stuff and if I find screws I buy them. So and I figured I wanted to keep I actually found a screw first look 
which was like almost impossible. So this is the screw here. So it's it fits in the hole, which is amazing. And now I just have to make sure that uh, that it's not too high up. The head is not too high up to interfere with the face. So I'm going to do a little bit of measuring there. But what I want to do first is I put a piece of rotic over here so the spring wouldn't fly out. And I've got to somehow get that wheel underneath this lever. So I figured I would just videotape this to see if it, it uh, is it at all interesting. So there's the wheel under the lever there. Um, and I've got to move that forward. So what I want to do next, now that I get the wheel under the lever, is I remove this Rodico. I'm not sure if this is going to be successful, by the way. But I put the Rodico there just to keep that spring in place. That's for that, that lever. But I don't want this Rodico to lift the spring up either. So I'm being very cautious here. There, like that. Just push that out of the way. And then I want to put this on top. And this goes in like so. And this little tiny arm has got to go on the other side of this. like that and then it's got to shift over like that and then that screw that I found goes over the top like this Oh my god. Oh my god. Hope you're watching this. This is like crazy stuff here. This is what I call crazy town. And I'm going to make sure I toothpick my part down here so it doesn't jump on me. Tighten that. And then I need to put the wheel in behind that. So what I got to do is tighten this. Or actually, if I push this forward, is it going to do the job or not? Because I need to tighten this screw right here from the other side. And I don't want that wheel to get out of position. So I'm just going to loosen that up like this. Very carefully go to the other side here keeping that wheel sort of vertical but tighten this screw right here which should grab the stem and then I have to put the, the name of the wheel here gonna make sure do I, do I look the name up or do I just just guess Ratchet something something wheel. So it's this wheel here that interface interfaces with that crown that goes in right here. So and I don't know whether that's going to go out of the way for me or not. Because I want that to move out of the way. Like that. And then I get to put take this the stem out to put that in. So that's the the action I want, but I've got to take the stem out to put that in, which means I've got to loosen that again, right, to take the stem out. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm getting suicidal right now. I'm hoping that is enough to take the stem out. Yeah, it is. 
and then when I take the stem out probably did this all in the wrong order I gotta take that wheel that I just showed you and uh, put that in this wheel here has got to go in right here right but and it goes like this actually goes like this the other way so the trick is to move all this crap out of the way to get that wheel in now is it possible I think I probably should use a screwdriver to do this um, and should I tighten this up again don't know this is just holding the stem down so I probably don't have to tighten it but I have to move this wheel out of the way here and then grab this nice and carefully throw that in patient try to keep the patient alive while I'm doing all this and then put this in like so oh my god I'm not I didn't tighten the movement holder on purpose like that I might I might have it I may have it I don't have my glove on right now but I don't give a shit I don't give uh I said the S word I hear that swearing is actually therapeutic so and I'm gonna just tighten this up here I'm not sure if you can see this or not but I, again I can't risk screwing this whole thing up and then let me tighten this up again here and I'm going to do some pushing and pulling to see if this did anything here so this here would wind the watch and this here would change the time the only problem I'm seeing here is that if this here winds the watch then where the hell is the crown for that there's a wheel is there a wheel missing there better not be a wheel missing because I'm looking around and I don't see any wheels missing oh I know what it is I need to put the rest of the watch back together again let me just flip this around and see if what's hap what action is happening on the other side when I do that oh you know look at that look at that so there's the action there so that's actually working so now I just need to put the uh, what's the name of this thing anybody know what the name of this is anybody the ratchet wheel I think it's called the ratchet wheel this is called the ratchet wheel I'm guessing here and I'm gonna get my glove back on and pause for a second so upper winding wheel ratchet wheel and that thing that that gear I just threw in there is called a winding pinion and that screw I found fits freaking perfect so and it's a much stronger screw head on that too so I just created a better a better watch I created a better watch so I'm gonna put this in but I still have to move the click spring out of the way because it's not gonna work well with the click spring in the way so anyway I showed you some some technique there that hopefully the watch gurus out there don't get me pissed off at so but I showed you some technique there I never worry about overwinding the screw here because the screw actually can wind the watch. But as I tighten it down, I've got to make sure that this... Oh, look at that. It actually slipped right into place, so I don't have the problem. So, do this, and I usually put my finger down or fingernail down so I get a little bit of torque on there. And then tighten this up. And again, don't over-tighten it or you'll frig up the screw.
Alright, so that's... There we go. That's actually holding the line, which is nice. Sure, it's a good idea to wind it now, but there we go. So that's holding it and it's holding the line. So I don't have very many parts left to put on this watch. So let's uh, continue the adventure. All right, so before I put the balance back in, which is the next next big job, I want to uh, I want to get under that jewel and just uh, clean that up. So I want to, I'm going to have to get in really close because that jewel is pretty uh, pretty teeny weeny. So I get my super duper magnifying glasses. These ones here that you've seen before. And I need to make sure that I don't screw this up. So this is so easy to screw up, I'm telling you. So i got to get world's smallest screwdrivers out here. Move everything else out of the way. Um, and I need to make sure that this, this setting doesn't go flying on me. Right, so let's just move that into the... Uh, let's move that just a bit in this direction here and that way you can see what's going on and I just want to take that jewel, the cap jewel off clean it and then put that back so I've, I've these things have gone fling before so I'm a little nervous here alright that's one side and I'm actually going to switch hands to do the other side Did I say I was going to switch hands? I did. So I'm going to switch hands to do the other side. And I'm realigning it so you guys can see what's going on here. Putting the, tooth, the toothpick down to give me some protection. And now that, that is off. So I can swing this up and out of the way like that. And then I'm going to grab that cap with some Rodico. Now I just breathed down and that thing that cap this swung down by breathing. There, there's the jewel there. And now I'm gonna go under my magnifying glass and clean that up and then get right back. I do not want to lose it. So let me just pause this here or stop recording and keep come back in a second. All right, I put that jewel under my um, magnifying my stereo microscope, and and now I've got to tap that in. So you put it under the stereo microscope, you separate the cap from the setting, and then you uh, very carefully um, get the gunk off the cap and get the gunk off the jewel that's in the setting, and then you once you've done all that. You put it back together, you put oil it, and then put it back in. So there we go. And the shock spring is back in and the jewel's been cleaned up nicely. So that's that job. That is that job. So that was good. And now I've got to flip this baby over again. I think I should put the cannon pinion back on right now though. Just before I forget. Um, otherwise I'll forget. So I'm just... Uh, my computer fan is starting to, to uh, speed up for some reason. Don't know why. So 
So this is the cannon pinion, which you uh, I usually line the leaves up from the top and then push down. But I can't do it while I'm on video, but I'm going to maybe move this over a bit so you can see it from the side. And I'm going to move my chair up a bit so I can get on top of this. And I use a staking a stake most of the time to push it down. That way I got control over that, right? Because if you use your tweezers and push it down, you don't have level control. So I just pick a small stake. It's flat. And it'll fit over the cannon pinion. I got my wrong glasses on, so I don't know if this is the right stake or not. No, it's got to be a lot bigger than that. So, got to pick the stake back in a second. Stake hunting. All right, I found the stake, so I'm going to put the cannon pinion back over here. One thing I did once years ago is when I was pushing the cannon pinion down, I uh, as a bad boy, I basically pushed it too far down and warped the plate on the other side. So it's something you want to watch out for that don't overpress that pin, cannon pinion into position. There we go. So that cannon pinion is down. So when I pull this out, this should turn, there we go. So I got very good action on that. All good. All good, man. So that's that job. I don't have to put in the hour wheel yet. Um, I got a couple extra screws here. <laughs> I know when you're working on aircraft, and I do, I'm not an aircraft technician, but I've worked in aerospace my whole career. If there's a tool missing, or you're putting together a, a part and you got an extra screw, not good. If there's a tool missing, then tool control will be all over you. So you'll end up having to. Uh, you'll end up having to spend the evening looking for tools. So, because you can't let a tool go astray in the world of tool control. Um, you cannot let a tool go astray because it could end up in the aircraft. Alright, so now I've got to put in this cool little winding mechanism thing here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little bit of oil on it first. Um, and like I said a million times, you hit the camera, is always clean your oiler first a bit. But I'm going to actually put some very small amount of oil on this shaft here. And that'll keep that shaft nice and lubricated when I put that, when I put the, uh, this gear in. And this gear is jeweled. I'm telling you, this watch has got like a boatload of jewels. So this is a gear that unwinds the watch. I may have to uh, I may have to try again with this here because it's uh, a little bit tricky. There we go. Now you see when I move this gear. How that moves the winding mechanisms very, very slowly. And I'm making an assumption that that's winding something in there. So I think it is. I'm not sure though. It's definitely not winding the barrel, but 
Oh, I can see underneath, right underneath, right inside of here, right inside that little hole there. If you recall, there was a gear that was underneath the mainspring barrel. And that, this wheel here, this gear here, this wheel here, when I turn this, it's moving that gear on the bottom. And that bottom gear is moving the, uh, the arbor for the mainspring barrel, which is basically torqued to uh, turn that mainspring. So that's how that works. That is friggin' cool. So now I think I'm in the position where I have to put the balance back in. So, in which I've, in a previous video, I'd already cleaned the balance and got it going nicely. So I'm going to just throw this balance back in. Because I believe that's the next job. And get this thing a ticking. And I do have this bridge here to put in. So I could put this in before I put the balance in. How's that sound? Yeah, let's do that. That way I've got the thing pretty much reassembled without the balance. And this looks like it's pretty easy to figure out how this goes. Kind of goes like this, I believe. You know, this might hold the, uh, let me see. I may have to take that out to hold the, this in, because there's a gear there. But I believe I put this in and then I slide that other device in there. So first I'm gonna just put the balance back in then. I'm not gonna fart with that. So, so there you go. Remember which screw is for what, too. I got two screws left, but they look like they're almost the same size. I don't know. Try them out. Anyway, so the balance is coming up next. So let's just see if I can put this balance back in. I turn this upside down, belly down. So when I pick it up, I pick this thing up. I want to. I want to be able to just turn it around and put it in. So. Maybe if I just move that around, this is the balance here I'm looking at here. Just move this in the way here, move this device out of here. There's the balance there on the end of my neat little tool I built for holding balances. And there's a little plate I made on my lathe to hold a screw. And I want to move this around like this. And that way when I grab it, I'm assuming I can throw that in. This is so touchy. I'm assuming I can throw that in, turn that around, and then um, trying to get it right on the edge so I can grab it. It's probably not a great idea, but I don't want it to go half over the halfway point because then it'll fall down. So if I can grab the balance like this. Like so. And then I'm going to turn that around and put it on the balance stake. Just let that hang for a second. Here we go. So that's just hanging there. And I'm going to, uh, I've got to put that in place. So which way does that go? So the pallet fork, i got a little bit of energy on the pallet fork here. So the pallet fork is on this side. So I want to put it on that side so I can enter the balance from this side and swing it around. Um, I'm also going to put a little bit of oil on the escapement special type of oil on the escapement. So let me grab the balance here. And I think this balance had a special spring on it, I read. It uh, had a very special spring on it. So I want to put it in like this. 
Um, you know what? Make sure there's more of an angle there. So I'm going to put it in like this. That is my ring wireless doorbell thingamajabby. Now, I'm always really nervous about this part because I do not want the balance to fall off, but I, uh, putting this in properly, is, I'm, ge I'm getting distracted by my wife going inside and outside the house. I'll have to tell her that. She'll probably watch this video and say, why are you distracted? There we go. Now, And we've got action. I think I want to turn that off because it's distracting the shit out of me. She's going in and out of the house. So, so I'm going to move this around like that and I'm going to get my toothpick out. And this is so I can put this back. And I wish it'd stop going in and out of the house. But she does have to go in and out of the house. So regardless of what I think, it's a necessary action. I'm seeing some nice action on that balance. So the pivots are in the holes so I can tighten this up. There we go. So now I've got myself a watch that's working. And now I'm going to take a break for a second and have a drink of water. So I'm getting a pretty good amplitude out of this watch, but I actually need to um, take the, the cap jewel off of here and clean that up just like I did the other jewel. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. So I'm not sure if this is kosher or not, but I opened up the, uh, <clears throat> the shock spring on this to remove the the jewel and I still have the watch running so I'm not sure if I want to do that so I think what I'm going to do is just put a piece of Rodico in there to stop the watch um, just to stop the balance I don't think that'll harm anything uh, and that way I don't have to worry about the uh, the alternative which is this pivot going all over the place so I just sew that little tiny tiny piece of Rodico down and that's going to do that's just going to stop the balance here. There we go. So I just threw that. It's it's touching the escapement. So that stops everything. So this is like a doctor operating and he stops the heart. So he can do <coughs> some major surgery here. So I'm doing major surgery. I think I served under him in the military. Major surgery. So, so I've got the balance here again. I'm going to go over to the magnifying or the stereo microscope again because that is the best place to be to do this job. Um, I just talked to the stereo microscope guy this morning just to see if he has a measuring lens for the stereo microscope because there's lenses that you can get that actually have a gradient on it and you can measure to extreme millimeters um, with that which is something I need. Um, so he's going to call me a little later on. He's skating on the canal. So let me uh, just turn this off and clean this jewel. Alright, just as I did last time, I now have to get that, that, um, the jewel with the jewel, um, setting is in. So I just did the, uh, cleaned up the jewel. I cleaned up the cap on that jewel. And I just need to tuck that in now.
Now I think that's in place. I'm going to take the radico out now and make sure I got movement here on this. And that just ensures that I have that jewel in the right place. So, and then I got to very carefully tuck these. That's one. And that's two. That's the shock spring back in. Whoever designed that shock spring was a genius. Because those are so much easier to do than those stupid ones that are circular that you have to kind of move out of place. Get that radical out of there. So that's a little trick there. So I just, uh, all you do is take that radico and throw it in there where the escapement is. And you're going to be able to, uh, to, to stop the whole movement while you do that. Because I don't think it's a good idea to have that movement running um, while you take the, uh, the upper balance jewel out, like that whole movement. So not a good idea. So now I've got this stuff here that I've shown you before that I use. And that's Mobius 9415. And that's used for the little feet on the escapement. And I like to do those. I've noticed how much better a watch runs when it's got a little bit of that on it. So in this case here, you just have to tap it. It's going to stop the watch for a second when I tap it. But you just have to tap it and then on a foot and then a couple feet later tap it again. And that'll That'll spread that to the, to the uh, face. There we go. That'll spread that to the uh, face of the pallet fork jewels. So that when they lock and unlock, um, they're lubricated. So they slip by nicely that way. And that usually you get a better amplitude out of your watch by doing that. I've done that before where I've had um, pretty shitty amplitude on a pocket watch and stuff and I've noticed that everything I'd done was correct but the amplitude was still poor um, and then I noticed that it was the the fact that that the uh, the pallet fork was even though it was cleaned and everything the jewels in the pallet fork were cleaned um, the feet on the escapement were causing too much friction so so this watch will work itself in um, and I've got to flip this over now and put in the remainder of the winding mechanism actually no sorry I do that from the top so I can put do that from the top right now so let me just pause this for a second all right now I'm going to put in the automatic winding mechanism but let me look at this here because that spins around this post here right so I want this to have a little bit of lubrication on it so it can uh, spin more freely I don't think the winding mechanism has got bearings on it for this particular watch look at it no it doesn't look like it's got no well, maybe if the bearings are inside that's different so it may or may not have bearings I'm not sure I don't think it does so I uh, there's no risk in, in uh, putting a little lubrication there on this side so it's I'm gonna do it damn it I'm gonna do it so I just put a little bit of this stuff here this is higher friction this is a red stuff I won't go through different Mobius lubrications because it's not worth it I have another video I made somebody emailed me this morning I said I said what lubrications do you use on a on a bull of a watch and I said well I made a video on lubricate lubricating watches and so it's all there you just have to watch the video um, you can also go and use Mr. Google and Mr. Google will tell you what lubrication to use on watches because that's what Mr. Google does for a living. So, so I'm going to put this back. And uh, just before I do that, I'm going to... I didn't clean the rotor in here, but I'm going to just put a little Rodico on there and just tap that down. Because there's no real guck on this thing. 
Not that, none that I can see anyway, but no visible guck. But it never hurts to just wipe it down a little bit with Rotico. Just make sure there's no hairs or anything else caught in this thing. Um, and the gears themselves on this rotor, there's a, a gearing mechanism here that you know, I don't think I want to. <coughs> excuse me. I don't think I want to put any lubrication on the gear. Um, there's a probably a school of thought that said you should. You says you should do that, but I'm not doing that. So forget that school of thought. There we go. So that, as you can see, turns everything. That's a thing of beauty, actually. I love this movement. It's just gorgeous. And then, I got like one screw remaining, I think. Or more than one screw remaining. And I'm like, kind of, okay. Why do I have a screw remaining? Like, what was this for? Oh, maybe it's... No, never mind. Uh, it might be for the to hold the movement in, actually. So, let me uh, get to switch glasses here. And, uh, geez, I tightened my glasses up in my loop. I'm using a close-up loop today. So my loop is a times seven, I think. So it's pretty close. I've, I'm yes, also using my, uh, as I've shown you before, I've got my table. Let's, uh, let's see, how does this go? I think this goes in like that. There's a screw and a stud. So I need to make sure the screw and the stud go in the right way. Because the uh, it looks like it goes like this, but Looks like it goes just like that. It's actually funny because there's a stud that goes down, and I don't know what the function of that is, other than going down. And then the screw goes in on top. And again, I don't want this thing to move. Sorry about hitting the camera every now and then. It's my fault. whole mechanism is kind of shaky man it's kind of shaky so I uh, I'm trying to keep very quiet here so I can do this without too much damage damage control the toothpick is really good though so it's I gotta hold my breath while I'm doing this Or just breathe lightly. I don't think you really have to hold your breath. You just have to breathe lightly. So that's in there. And just so I don't scratch the rotor here. See if that works. Look at that thing of beauty. I'm just flicking this around. And it is moving nice and freely. This is a great um, design. Uh, bravo to the engineers who designed this. So this little plate here actually keeps this this gear down on top, right? So it doesn't lift up. Um, so I think I'll put a little bit of lubrication on the top of that gear because it's probably rubbing against this plate as it stays down. I know it's rubbing against the plate as it stays down. I don't want that to uh, get mushed up. Um, but this just says that, you know, after a while there's dust that gets into watches somehow. And because of that, I'm going to use a very light lubricant on this. Um, there we go. And just put it right there. 
and because there's dust that gets into watches um, it's it's you've got to clean them every now and then because that'll clog up that little movement and it won't the gear this this very nice uh, let's turn that around to spread that oil like so um, and it looks like it did spread a bit I've already oiled the shaft on that as you saw earlier I do need to throw some oil down throw some oil down sound like a homeboy let's throw down the oil I need to oil these jewels here I didn't, didn't oil those yet so I'm gonna throw some oil down on this look at that the old throw down And again, pull the oiler out of the oil really slowly. And that'll ensure that you don't get like a boatloads of oil that you don't need on your watch. So that is in mint condition. That's really good. Um, now, I gotta flip this baby over because I need to put the face back on. And I need to do some other stuff. So I'm going to pause or stop the video for a second and start again in a second. So I think I found out where that extra screw goes. Because you can't have an extra screw. It looks like this plate takes the extra screw. I'm not sure because it looks like it does, but maybe it doesn't. You know what? It doesn't actually fit in there. This one might, or this one might. I'm not sure. That's kind of weird. It's the extrascrews.com. I think that might be where it goes. i got to look in super close to see if there's supposed to be a screw going in there, because basically these two screws might be in the wrong position. And then I have to figure out what to do, what to do, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. Yeah, so that's where the extra screw goes. So I did. I have to do some screw moving here. Because this screw here, see if I can get in close without compromising my position here. This screw here is too small. The threads are the right, are the right size, right? Plus I have it in too tight. I think I don't want to strip the head on this one too, right? That'll be too... And I'll go have to go screw hunting again. But if I take this out here, yeah, this looks like it's too small for that hole. And put that. Where the heck did my tweezers go? <laughs> so I found my tweezers. I'm moving that one one over to see if it makes a difference. There we go. That's in nice and tight. And then I got this other screw that didn't seem to want to fit in the other hole because the head was too big. So I'll see if this fits in this hole, which it should. And I gotta line it up properly, which means I gotta grab it backwards, I think. I showed another video how to use a, how to use tweezers properly. If you pick the screw up, thread first. This doesn't want to go in here either, so I think what happened was I have Oh no, uh, is that going in? No, it's just gliding around. I think what happened is, is I got, uh, I don't know, this seems like it's sort of almost wanting it to go in, right? Let me have a look again here and see if this can. Is 
Looks like I'm taking metal off with my uh, <laughs> with my my uh, screwdriver. I'll watch that. There we go. That's good enough. Good enough for government work. That one's in there. I think that's good. Um, and then what do I got to do here? So I think that is in, and that's fine. Uh, and then I got to flip this thing around. All right, only a few steps left. So first I'm going to put on the hour wheel here. Let's put that on top nicely. It should just slide into place. There we go. That's the hour wheel. You can't have too much hitting the camera happening, right? And now I've got to grab the face and put that on. All right, so that's that. Um, I've got the face here, um, but I know for a fact that I can't put this face back on without, you know, be sure I've got my gloves on here, without moving the dial screws to uh, make sure that it catches. So, but I'm going to put it on like this, and then the dial screws will move out of the way after I move the dial screws. So, so let me just see if I can. The face should be like this on the watch. But I have a feeling I gotta put it on my nice little pad to do this properly. So why don't I do that? Let's move it to the pad. Alright, the adventure continues. So I've got my watch on the very nice Bergeon. Bergeon uh, 5395-75-N. And this is like gel, so it really protects the watch against nonsense. So so I'm just gonna put this down here and see if I can line this up properly and of course I'll be touching the movement as I'm doing this so it's uh, it's aligning it properly I keep touching the there we go so that's in I'm going to flip this around now don't touch the balance and allow the weight of the movement to hold this thing down while I try to find out where the screws are. There they are. So there are the screws on the side. So the movement screws. So I just have to tighten these. There's one here. And it's funny, I got, I think I got, because of the lighting, um, it's trying to light things up too much. And because of that, it causes other issues. Okay, so that's not sitting down nicely and I keep hitting my finger on the... I wish I could swear on these videos because I would. Okay, that's one. Turn that around nice and easy. I got my finger on it but I'm not too concerned here. The other one should be on the other side. Where is it? Where is it? Two doll feet equals two jobby doos. Jobby doos. Where is the other one? No, no. Look at that. It's hidden right under the balance. This jobby do is hidden under the balance. Let me light this thing up here so I can see what I'm doing. Turn it off. Turn it on. How nice and clear that is, except I can't see anything. <clears throat> there we go. Now I can see stuff. So this one here, I just put a little bit of pressure down here, and then there we go. That's the other one. So that now this is nice and tight. Um, looks like it's affecting the uh, the swing of the balance. Is that true? Because if you have this on too tight, sometimes the balance swing is going to be impacted. Okay. 
tighten that up just a bit and then I'm going to go on this side here and I'm going to loosen this up and then tighten it again. This watch is running perfectly and I don't want it to I don't want the uh, it to be squeezed and cause an additional issue. Yeah, that's kind of kind of screwing up the uh, the amplitude. So what I'm going to do is take that off and see if I can fix that. So I uh, demagnetize the movement and the the uh, balance is swinging like crazy. So I'm not sure if that's a magnetism issue or what, but it seemed like it spread the hairspring out nicely and it's all it's pulsing really well. So that's good. Um, so I think I can case the movement now. And I gotta basically do some fancy stuff to case the movement. So the movement goes in from it goes in from the top. This is the top of the movement. So the movement actually you flip this bugger around and you you bring it in from the top, lay it down, and then you flip it around again and put in the studs that hold it in place. So so the, to remove this the um, I got to remove the stem first to do that. So I got to this rotor is working so well it just wants to flip down to the other side every time I do something with it. So so I got to remove the um, the jobby do hickey thing. I got to undo this screw here just to loosen it up just a bit. Not a lot because I don't want to frig things up again. So I just undo that like that and then flip that around and that's still ticking away nicely and that's line I gotta line this up with the where this this uh, entrance way for the stem is that's been all cleaned up nicely I'll hit it with Rodico again but I did clean this earlier so shouldn't have anything in it nope so just turn that around very carefully and I've already tightened everything up so I could lay this down and then do that but I think I'll just go in from the top like this just so I don't have any other issues here there we go so that's in now and then I just have to put the stem in flip that around and tighten it again so hopefully that's nicely aligned and I can just drive that stem in like that <coughs> excuse me that stem is in so then I'll just flip this around again and it stopped ticking because I screwed something up <coughs> I have to have a look at that. I'm not sure what I screwed up. I'll have a look. Alright, so I'm back again. Um, the balance just seems to... I'm not sure. I may have to put this in alcohol for like a week. But anyway, the uh, spring seems to stick together every now and then. But I'm going to reassemble this and let it run for a while and see if this happens again. But for now, um, it's not running... It's running really well, actually. Uh, where's my C1A1 toothpick? It's running very well, um, and there's no issue there. I just need to make sure, just keep an eye on this thing, because if, uh, if the balance uh, spring, if the, uh, the hairspring tends to get stuck together, uh, there's a chance that what you have is a uh, goo or guck in the hairspring that's just a bit more than normal. And I found that if you put uh, the hairspring in, uh, put the hairspring in, in lighter fluid for like half an hour, um, you're likely to fix the problem. So I've done this before. 
um, and see it's running nicely now no problem uh, and it solved the problem so but this watch tends to want to fall out of here so I'm gonna have to go back to my nice soft movement holder again uh, I want to be able to brace it somehow without having the uh, I don't want pressure on on the center wheel here so what I might do is is just rest it on the crystal I know the crystal's not in place yet but if I rest it on the crystal and flip it around then I'm gonna, not going to have any problems so that's resting on the crystal right now I could probably put it down here and not without too much concern um, and yeah the watch seems to be still running no problemo um, the hairspring does seem to bunch a bit though so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take this hair this, this uh, balance out again and then put the whole damn thing into uh, lighter fluid uh, and just see if that solves my problem I may have to leave it for like half an hour or so and then I'll be back I'll be back so I've thrown the whole balance in kit and caboodle into lighter fluid just to get rid of that issue and I'm going to agitate the lighter fluid slightly so it's so it's getting in between the hairspring and coils and this is like I've done this before so it's not new for me but it's something I don't like to do but It just means I have to re-oil the capsule on there too, because that'll destroy the oil in the capsule for sure. And I'll make sure I stretch out the hairspring as well. I think that's what the issue has got to be. It's got to be some goo on the hairspring somehow. It can't be magnetism, as I've demagnetized it a number of times. So that's impossible. And I just stretch that out a bit, like so. And after I leave it there for like 15 minutes, and then I'll take it out and let it rest on a balance tack for a while until it's all dried out, then I'll do the jewel again. All right, I've taken the uh, the balance hairspring, all that stuff out of the out of the um, movement, threw it into the lighter fluid, and now it's just sitting there drying probably use my puffer and just try to accelerate the drawing price process here so it's not taking nine years to dry um, and that should get rid of any gunk or residue that's left over on that but I also have to deal with that jewel now again and redo that. So I'll just pause here and then so you don't want to see me puffing forever. All right, that's all done. And just to let you know, that made a huge difference in the amplitude of this watch. A huge difference. So I'm very, very pleased. So this was the hairspring gummed up. I was pretty sure I cleaned the hairspring, but perhaps not. I thought I had cleaned it in the previous, uh, as previous work I had done, but I didn't. So. So just tossing that into uh, into that uh, that bottle cap full of lighter fluid, uh, it lighter fluid will not affect the shellac holding the impostule, and now the thing is just running like crazy, as you can as you can see. So its amplitude is perfect. So I've got to remove it from this crazy movement holder. I just lightly put it on there because I didn't want to affect the, uh, the case. I also put that movement holder into the uh, demagnetizer just to make sure it wasn't the demagnetizer the movement holder that was causing some of the issues so now I've just got to case this again and hopefully this thing just keeps clucking like it's clucking right so it turns out it wasn't a magnification or a magnus a magnet whatever it's called uh, <laughs> magnetic issue a magnification issue oh my god to learn to speak that language 
or as they call it, the Queen's English. Anyway, uh, I'll have to rotico the face again just to make sure it's uh, not screwed up. So, so there we go. So now it's basically just case this back in like so nicely, and I got to put that stem back in. And then I also demagnetized the stem in case I was like surrounded in magnetism, which I wasn't sure. So, but you never know. So I just demagnetize everything. And then let's just see if I can get this stem in without problems. It's not always easy to get the stem back in, by the way. Sometimes these parts tend to want to just move around a bit. There we go. So that's there. And I gotta tighten that screw, the screw of all screws. And the watch is still running exceptionally well, which is great. Now I gotta tighten that screw. Let me just move this out of the way a bit. I'm not sure if you're focused or not right now. I don't think you are. I think you're because I got everything up so high, I think I'm out of focus. So I'll just refocus it for a second. <clears throat> for y'all benefit, as they say, for y'all benefit. And tighten this up. That should be good. There we go. That's in winding mode. Like that. And then I've got this. I'm going to do what I did before is put this rest this on the crystal. And then down here. And then I will. That way I don't have this uh, going in. So it's resting on the crystal right now, but I got to pop that in. This is a difficult job because I have to put in the holder. On top of that so and that my friends is this crazy device this thing here has got to go in there so I'm gonna just put this down for a second and refocus and see if I can get this in somehow so stand by to stand by because it's kind of loosey-goosey right now and you can't have that can't have that I don't care who you are so I'm afraid I can't do this little job without without uh, being very close to the winding stem. I, I changed loops two seconds ago and now they're all stuck in my damn glasses. So I can't move it properly. Alright, there we go. So this this thing here, this thing here goes in somewhere in here. It's kind of, there's a little, the winding stem is kind of aligned with it so it kind of drops in right there. Like that. And then there's uh, two screws that I got to put back. One there and one there. And this is going to be touchy as hell. So I'm sure I will screw this up, screwing up the screws. Again, do not breathe or you'll frig it up. And maybe I should put the bigger one in first and that way it's stable. Man, I gotta hold the, the body in there while I'm doing this. That's the issue. I got the camera right next to everything, so.
Get the right screwdriver. Oh, I think I got it slipped. Slipped again. Again, I got this effing camera right next to the effing watch which makes it effing impossible to do this but I'm doing it so that you guys can see the video so I hope you appreciate it please make comments saying you appreciate it because if you don't I refuse to do this close-up work again like this because it's effing impossible to get the screwdriver in while I got the zooming in on the camera so you got your choice um, anyway I'm gonna put this screw in here and hopefully that's not as difficult oh, for F6 this is pissing me off this is a very stupid movement I don't I'm not actually sure what this thing is for Let's see if I can use my erotico to put it in there we go I'm not sure what this arm is for at all it doesn't make any sense I don't actually think it's holding the movement in place at all. So, there we go. That's in. And that's in. So now, if I just swing over, I think I, I have a, uh, this thing here on this side is where the, where this screw has to go to hold the, the actual movement in place. So I got a, a screw here that I got to throw in. And I'm hoping this isn't a big, big enough, a big problem. It's always good to angle that just a bit when you're doing it. So that way, if the screw wants to go somewhere, it's not going to go inside the movement. And you won't have to take the whole movement apart to find one screw. there perfect so there's another one over here but I I'm gonna have to find a screw for it because that is screw missing but I'll get everything else in first so so there we go the movements in there and I'm going to just wipe the top off with Rodico again because it's let me just zoom that it's looking a little bit rough again because I got the old fingerprints on it so I'm just gonna wipe this down with Rodico again and this will just get rid of any fingerprints that I put on this inadvertently by holding this because I had to hold it inward uh, to get that to, to actually uh, to grab it is it was frustrating so watch repair work can be extremely frustrating if you let it be so it's like let it be let it be in I don't think I have any finger fingerprints on the inside of this. I made sure I didn't touch the inside of this at all. So I think I'm good there. So now i got to figure out how to get this on. And what I did before was I used my my claw, the infamous claw, to put this on. And I'm not sure. I think I probably need to use the claw again to get it on properly. Because if you don't use the claw, then it is not going to fit on properly. Unless that just snapped in. Did that just snap in? Oh my god. So I just took it and I and I just took one edge and put it in and the whole <laughs> the whole thing snapped in. The only problem is I forgot to put the fucking hands on. <laughs> Damn. Now I gotta take it out. No I know it's easy to put in that way though, so I'll take it out using the claw. Let me grab the claw. So this is the tool that I've only used once or twice, this thing here. So, and I did this before, um, so all I did was take this here, hold it sideways like that, increase the size of the claw, and then put it out. So I gotta do it, I may have to do it off camera, I don't know. So I'm gonna basically increase the claw size till I get it to fit over the top of this, and then pinch in on the claw. This is probably worth videotaping, so I'm just going to go underneath like this and show you how this works. So, I'm completely moving my camera position just for you guys. So there we go. So zoom that in. 
nicely. That's about good enough. So I put that down like that. And then I've got this claw coming down like this. And I need to turn the top of it uh, clockwise, I believe, to tighten that. And once I've tightened it a bit, um, and this happened to me last time, it just slips out. So you just have to be patient and and press down on the damn thing. And you don't want you don't want the uh, the watch. The, you don't want to break the crystal first of all, right? And so it takes a little bit of work to get this thing out. Um, and I'm really reluctant to do it really hard because I don't want to break anything. And I know that... I can tell that whether it's grabbing or not, right? Yeah, I'm going to do it upside down. That way the gravity will push the crystal down when I let go. There, I did it. So what I had to do is grab it with the claw, tighten the claw, and then sort of angle this as I pulled it off because it was slipping off the side of the crystal. So it wasn't working that well that way. So so that's what I did. And as you can see, just very carefully move the rotor out of the way. Watch, it's still ticking nicely. Which is a good thing. There, it's ticking nicely. So I'm going to reposition the camera and then put the back on. All right, so just for the record, uh, the watch is ticking very nicely. It's doing a really good job. I just need to put the back on it. It's a pop-on back, so it's and there's a there's a um, there is a ga a gasket here. I'm not too concerned with, um, as I will never go diving with this watch. This watch will be for for uh, professional use only. Um, this gasket should should uh, be fine. I'll put a little bit of, of my gasket grease on there, which is, I could grab it here really quickly. Where the heck is my gasket grease? Here it is, this side up. <coughs> so this is the Seiko, Seiko, Seiko gasket grease is what it says. So, and what I do there is take, take a toothpick and use a toothpick just to very lightly spread the uh, grease along the gasket. Um, that way I don't have to uh, try to take that gasket out of the groove. And um, I will not be wearing this anyway for any purposes other than just look at this cool watch I have, right? So, so I can grease the gasket up a bit like that. Just put a little bit of gasket grease on there as I go around. And rub that in a bit. And I'm talking very little, because if you put too much gasket grease, there is a chance that that might mi migrate. You don't want it to migrate, so. And, of course, you can probably clean up the leftovers of erotico if you have a problem there, so. So just make sure you grease it up just a bit. And that, that'll prevent any, if it's raining out and you decide to go, go on a date, um, and you're wearing this watch, you don't have to worry about it getting soaked in water. There we go, that's nice. And And one other thing I need to do, but I'm not going to bother recording it, is I need to put some oil in the stem. It's kind of a greasy stem oil you put on there, but you got to put some a little bit of oil in the stem. And uh, so that's the gasket grease, and I can compress that on um, a little, little later. I put a, I got a box that I put this side up this side up with a little arrow and that way I don't make the mistake of putting this this side down and then I get the gasket grease stored and it makes a friggin mess everywhere so so that's that 
Um, I want to put the back on before I bother putting the hands back on because I, uh, I want it to be kind of stable as I put the hands back on. There's a little edge for opening it and then I think that there's a stem, is there a stem thing here? No. No, there's just an edge for opening it, but if you're if you're a purist, you'll put the back on exactly the way it came off. Which means this way or the other way. Uh, this way here has got there's an edge right here, right? But I'm concerned that that edge um, is I'm concerned that this edge, this is the edge I used to open it up with, right? So I'd rather this edge be on the top, not on the side. So, and I see no edges at all for the stem because it doesn't really need it. So this would go kind of like that. Or I could put it at an angle or put it right at the back, which might be better because then I got some room when I want to take the back off. I got some room to actually work that, right? So, and I want, sorry about hitting the camera here, but. I want this to be relatively straight, right? So I want it to be kind of. It's pissing me off. It's pissing me off because I got the camera so close, so you can see what's going on. And I just keep hitting it with my thumb, so. So I'll just maybe back the camera off a bit here, right? So just back this camera off. And forget what you're looking at. There. Now I'm not going to hit the damn thing. There's that screw I screwed up earlier with the screw head. <clears throat> so that's it there. Um, but I have to press this on, right, which I don't want to do. And I think I just put the top, the crystal back on again. Wonderful! So, anyway, i got to press the back on, which should just compress on, which is doing right now. There we go. So the back is on right now. So that's good. The back is on. The front is on. <laughs> so I gotta put the hands back on, but the front is on. Um, so I gotta take it off with this crunchy crunch crunch thing again. So all I can say is never buy a friggin' watch that has the crystal that comes or the movement that comes out from the front. What a pain in the butt. So there we go. So now I just have to put the hands on. And that shouldn't be too bad a job. But probably something will happen <laughs> this will be a long video I apologize but too bad you're just gonna have to watch all of it to appreciate the work that went into it so it wasn't easy so that's the uh, hour hand first I gotta get up close again but I need my hand set so I got a really nice set of hand pressers that I got when I, uh, I bought some some leftover stuff from a guy and he had these gorgeous hand pressers. It was a lot of equipment, so a lot, a full lot. So it came with these really nice hand pressers that have got great ends on them. So, so I use that, press this, press this hand on. I gotta turn this sideways so I can see 12 o'clock. But, but I, what I do here is I line up the hand like this, right? And make sure that it's lined up as close as I can to 12 o'clock um, and then just press this down. I need a cleaner toothpick. And if I'm off at all from 12 o'clock I just I think I need a bigger hand presser here too because this one here is not going to completely go around so I need to pick the biggest hand presser that this thing has and I think it is this one, which is the yellow one. I'm hoping it's this one. Because you don't want to press the hand on with a hand presser that's the wrong size. No, that's better. So now we've got to line this up again. Pick a clean toothpick. I, I think I'm going to start swearing in my videos. That way I can get the frustration out of my system. So you just hold that down like that, and that should just press down nicely, like so. I'm going to look at it 
that's pressed down now so I just look at it as an, at an angle here to just to make sure I got no issues that way so it's a little bit high so I'm going to lower that just a bit just press down like this and then just tilt forward a bit and that should give it a little bit of a forward action yeah that's good there and then I'm looking at the hands and there's plenty of movement for the next one to go in and the next one the hand presser I need for the next one is actually smaller now as this watch is ticking away um, if you're on still on 12 o'clock great but if you happen to go deviate from 12 o'clock you gotta move your minute hand a little bit the other way right so I'm just gonna grab this nice and carefully here and you need to put that down again my glasses are sliding off my greasy nose like that and then I gotta get a different hand presser because this one here is probably way too big for that so the one I had before should be better so I'm gonna go to that one for a second and see if that works um, anyway I'll line that up again like this um, and be prepared to push it with my toothpick or my tweezers and grab my toothpick and smash the camera again and I really want to work it the other way so I'll do this for now and I'm going to press down just a bit not a lot and then push these hands over a bit because the other hand is not quite on 12 I push down on that and then look at it at an angle again and it doesn't look too bad I think I'll press down just a bit more though There we go. I heard the little <clears throat> in there. That's perfect. I'll show you the the hands after I get them all in place. And the second hand doesn't really matter if it's not exactly on 12. So it's it's got personality. So so to push the second hand on, you need actually a snub. So it's a uh, I will put it on top, and then just you just need to push it down lightly. And you don't want to ruin the pipe on the, on the uh, like the pivot on the top of that hand. So you got to watch when you're putting that second hand on that you're very careful not to damage that pivot. There. So that's that. Now I see it's working because this hand's already moved a bit. So I think it's pretty nicely aligned. Because if you can see the hour hands at just 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 at 12, just a little tad past 12. And the uh, minute hand is just a little tad past 12 as well. So so that's very nice. Um, and now I just have to look at it from an angle. And if you look at it, I'll try to zoom in properly here. Just do this and try to zoom in a bit or get it closer maybe and zoom in so you can see the hands as they uh, are aligned so so there you go um, you just get that done here so it's camera still shaking a bit there we go so over 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 under there we go so there's the hands and as you can see they're not touching each other there's little gaps between them and you see the second hand going around there and they're definitely aligned nicely so that's that's really nice so that's the waltham so i gotta put the cap on again oh my god that <laughs> shock proof so i gotta put the cap on again so this is the so there's the waltham hands are nicely aligned beautifully aligned my fingernails need cutting and the uh, I just have to put the cap back on and I did that before accidentally three times 
So I think it's really easy to just take this this uh, particular um, movement and just tuck this in like that. There we go. Look how easy that was. And then I'll pull the stem out. Hopefully it, it'll work. And set the time. And the time now is 12.36. So, and I'm going to see if I, if this is working well from a regulation perspective. And I can just push that back in again, I think. I just pulled it out, so we better be able to push it in. There we go. And it's already wound. I wound it earlier, so that's good there. And I'll refocus this. I'll refocus this, and we'll have another look at it. How's that sound? So here are the results of the watch. I've got an excellent amplitude at 235. I've got a uh, plus 6, 15 seconds per day, which is really good uh, on the uh, rate for the watch. And the bead air is off slightly, which I can adjust. So the watch is running really well. I can, I can uh, regulate this a little bit later, but excellent results for this particular movement. All right, we're now finished. So that's the uh, Waltham 25 Joule Super Thin Automatic watch uh, gold um, running really well now as you saw I did have to do the hairspring again um, and uh, it was quite the job so so that was hard um, and uh, I just hope you enjoyed this video today because it was a very difficult uh, video to make uh, given the size of the watch and that I have to have that camera pretty close anyway some challenges with respect to taking that uh, crystal off and then dumping the movement out the front. Um, and it was a uh, pretty uh, pretty successful, I'd say. I got it running very well, and I'm very impressed with the engineering of the rotor, of the whole automatic winding movement. Very, very impressive. So that's my video today. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, again, uh, hit the bell if you want to see more of my videos. Um, please uh, comment on my videos. I actually really enjoy the comments that I get from you. If you enjoyed the video, please make a comment. If you think I'm sloppy as hell, make a comment. I don't think I am, but um, not a lot of watchmakers will show you how they do their work. Uh, and I'm willing to do it, and I think that's just a, above average. Um, I take very, very good care of the movements and the watch. I make sure that I don't screw things up. I do things three times if I need to. If you want to uh, if you're interested in me servicing your watch in the future, um, just uh, just uh, you can email jdwatchservice at gmail.com. That's jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I've done a few jobs for people recently. Um, they've got some very, very good, uh, some very uh, nice reviews. Um, and uh, my friend BJ from North Carolina, I've got one of his watches I have to do this weekend, um, the 24 Jewel. Uh, pocket watch it's it's a thing of beauty um, I did a video on it just reviewing it earlier um, but I'll work on that uh, probably start today and then finish it off tomorrow um, but well let's just uh, let this one run for a while and I'll put it in the uh, e-timer and regulate it properly so but it's uh, it's looking good man it's looking good thanks a lot and I'll see you later